Hello, my friends, Katie Day with the Move Me to Texas team here with another episode of the Real Advice Podcast. I am excited today to dig in with my friend, Rachel Novak from Pacific Northwest, Washington State, and just talk about all things real estate. Rachel, what is going on? Thank you so much for having me on, Katie. I am excited. It's been a really fun journey as since we joined real a little over a year ago, getting to know you and connecting a lot of the dots on our friends and our circles and connecting over all things real estate and mom and future momhood, as well <laughs> yeah, yeah. as fitness and all the things we have in common. It's been really fun. I know. I know. I'm excited um, to dig in today because I, I think you have a unique background and a unique um, perspective on real estate. Um, and so the more I get to know you, the more things I uncover and see, you know, on social and conversations we have and stuff like that. So I'm excited to dig in. Um, for those that may not know you, how did you get into real estate? Great question. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't want to get back in real estate. Uh, my husband and I started in real estate. He Really, he started as a builder back in 2003. I got in 2005 uh, separately and we met through through the industry in 2005. Okay. So I was a front desk receptionist at the ripe age of 19 for a Windermere location, which is a regional brokerage up yep. here in the Pacific Northwest. And um, I, I loved it. I loved everything about it from, of course, the houses to the people to the challenges daily. Um, so when I met Mike, we were at a broker's open when those were really big, when you were able to throw huge parties and invite yep. all the people with waiters walking around with champagne. Those were back in the you know 2005, really fun times. But we met then. Um, and we're in real estate for a couple of years. Uh, we got really obliterated through 2008 because as a builder, he had, yeah. he was, you know, he had about $7 million of projects open at the time. And yeah. uh, we, we lost all that at the time. So we went into a different direction and owned restaurant company for almost 10 years and then got back into real estate in 2016. He, he literally will say like, I made two great sales in my life. Number one, getting Rachel to marry me. Number two, getting Rachel back in real estate. <laughs> Well, and like y'all picked like two of the hardest industries to be successful in, right? Like yeah. hospitality and food and beverage, and then you know real estate both have very high failure rates. Yeah. Um. So the the fallback of going into to restaurants and things like that is uh surprising. <laughs> it was wild, and honestly, like we love to build, and I think that's yeah. why it attracts us into these yeah. different industries because it you have to build to be successful, and you have to continue to grind. And we, you know, we work best under chaotic situations we you know we really we really thrive in an environment where we have to be creative and um gritty you know and resilient yeah. so i think that's that's what really brings us in a connects us into these crazy industries yeah for sure um that's interesting and you said, so you said 2016 is when you guys got back into things yep back into real estate yeah and that's so at that point in time you both were both doing like the realtor thing or yeah, so, okay. exactly. So he, when we got back into it, it was the, the end of 2016 and all of 2017, we just like put our nose to the grindstone. So yeah. we literally, our bread and butter was just pay-per-click leads and we would spend three to four hours a day prospecting and, <laughs> you know, converting people and connecting yeah. with people and talking to people. Um, we were the most disliked people in our office at the time because we didn't <laughs> really socialize. We didn't. Oh really man. What a, what a novel concept going into work to work. Yeah. Um. It's, it's a wild <laughs> thing, right? It's a wild thing. Um, but you know, that first year we closed 79 transactions, the two of us, and I was doing all the TC and he was doing all the marketing and we were kind of like, shoot, you know, we, we may have something here. Like, why don't, yeah. why don't we bring people into this? Right. Why don't we start a team? So we, we started the, the growth at that point in 2017. So, um, that's interesting that PPC was the, what you leaned in on, right. When you guys got back into things and obviously having some experience, you know, like you've got to have different lead sources and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, as if I were a newer agent and I had the budget for it, right. And I had the savings to be able to say, okay, I'm going to dedicate a couple thousand dollars a month or how much ever it is fit 500, whatever a month for the next six months to 12 months or whatever, you know, have an actual budget, right. Mm -hmm. Um, what advice would you give as far as converting those leads? That's a great question. And I think it truly and honestly depends on uh, the time and the market and the economy with which you're in. At the time, um, you know, we actually followed Ben Kinney's good old 10 days of pain. 
Yep. And we were absolutely relentless. Um, if we couldn't get a hold of you via email or a text or a call, we would find you on Facebook and be like, hey, I saw that you were looking at homes online on my website. <laughs> like, so creepy, Katie. It's so creepy. Um, but at the time, like in 2016, 17, it worked and people were actually yeah. like, oh my gosh, yeah, like, thanks. Thanks whereas so much. Now, <laughs> yeah. Whereas now I, I don't think in 2023, people would be as welcoming to that, right? It's a little yeah. bit of a different world at this point. So um, yeah, I think if, if they were to really lean in, it would really just be to br continue to bring value. So, you know, if people do sign up on the website. If you are paying for that and have that little bit of budget for, for PPC, bring value. Um, you know, I, I watched your part of your webinar earlier today on, you know, sharing Sharon's deal of the week, right? Yeah. And just continue to be relentless about, about that conversion because it, it compounds. You're yeah. going to find maybe one to 3% on a good day of those people who want to move pretty quickly. Um, and then, you know, one to 2% of that one to 3% are going to be nine to 18 months out. So you have yeah. to give you just super consistency. Yeah, no, that's huge. Um, what's funny, you say that like, you would actually take the time to like find them on Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, with all of the things, you know, you just put a Facebook pixel on your website, right? And mm -hmm. then you follow them around the internet until they until they <laughs> yes. come back again. It was um, way so at least, easier. Let's be yeah, at least technology <laughs> has helped us in that respect. Um, but yeah, if you started like DMing people when they initially came onto your website, they would be like, block, block, yeah. block. Pretty much. Um, but, you know, that's that's hilarious. That cracks me up. <laughs> I mean, we just took De Ben's 10 days of pain and we're like, well, let's just 10x this. Yeah. Like, how can we go deeper? <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but <laughs> this is how we'll be a little bit more stocky. Exactly. Um, no, I think that the other takeaway I had from what you just said is like this such a small percentage are going to be the ones that are ready to go now. Right. And I think that that goes for all leads. You know, I mean, people, agents always say like, oh, you know, these are bad leads or oh, whatever. And it's like when we look at all of our lead sources, yeah, there are some that that are higher conversion than others, right? If if your best friend calls you and says, "Hey, my my friend's looking to move," that's clearly going to convert a, a lot higher percentage than a PPC lead or a social media lead or whatever. But like, there's still a very small sliver of the pie that are ready today. Absolutely, and it's like I think the what we were okay with was no. We were being we were okay being yeah. told no. We we expected it actually. We we literally had a little motto between us where we would do these like pump up things. We'd like do some jumping jacks and get our energy super high before we hopped on the phone. And every time, like, like, I mean, people look in through our office window, we're like, what the hell are those people doing? Like, That's probably why they didn't like y'all. They're like these psychopaths <laughs> are just in here like squatting and doing jumping jacks. Pretty much, pretty much. But like, um, we were excited about the no because every single yeah. no meant we were closer to a yes. And yeah. like as cheesy as that sounds, it's exactly what's our mentality. It is true. <laughs> Um, at that time, how big were Mike's arms? Were they, Honestly, they were, they were tiny. They were like okay. 17 inches, which yeah. comparatively they're like 19 and three quarters now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. so not, not huge. Okay. <laughs> I just wasn't sure, though, so, you yeah. know, I'm trying to picture, you know, knowing him now, like what, you know, that was what that looked like in the office. So yeah. all good. I'll, I'll text you before and after because it's, <laughs> it's stark. It is stark, Katie. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, uh, Rachel and Mike, they work out a lot um, and they are part of the Hatch coaching world. And so I really like to make fun of Mike and then Colton Lindsay is, or mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Col yep. No, Colton Whitney. And Whitney. Whitney yeah. Well, they're, they just, their names are so similar. Uh, Colton Whitney. Lindsay, they both have female names as their last name. But yeah. anyways, Colton and Mike both have very large arms. So I like to make fun of them, like, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Just because it's what we do. Anyways, That's I digress. Um, so you guys got back into real estate 2016. How did you balance working together? Mm. It's a constant balance, Katie. It's a constant balance. We, in the first year, like I said, we were, were kind of, our backs were a little bit of against the wall. Um, we got back into it really out of necessity because in Washington state, there is a huge legislation change for the minimum wage laws. And mm. for restaurant companies, yeah. you know, it, it obliterated about 30 to 40 percent of restaurant companies in the state because the minimum wage went up about almost four dollars an hour. And so That's when you huge. Have, yeah. So for us, like we had 425 employees at the time. Do the math. Like you can't raise yeah. menu prices fast enough to really overcome that. So we really were kind of in an exit strategy out of that company and back into real estate. And so yeah. it really we didn't have a choice. It was very, you know, back up against the wall kind of a thing. Um, 
but um and i think katie i just forgot your original question <laughs> <laughs> no all good um so like how did you guys oh you know, working i know together. you both i know you both are grinders and like you're yeah, gonna you're you gonna can. like do what you need to do to get stuff done right like i i know that about you and anyone that meets you like just in, in minutes like sees that work ethic right but like in balancing working with each other because i mean my my husband and i work together right he's he's across the hall from me right now um yeah. You know, it it's some days are great and some days aren't, right? So how do you how do y'all balance that, or how did you as you were kind of getting back into the business together balance okay. that? Thank you. Yes, back on track now. Um, so really, it really comes down to identifying and understanding each other's strengths and each other's areas of opportunity, right, or weaknesses. Um, I think that it's <laughs> so PC, so PC areas of opportunity. <laughs> well, you know, like you telling a man that he has weaknesses does, does not go over well. If you say here, I think we have an area of opportunity, it's going to be received better. <laughs> Um, it cracks me up that you say that. So one of the books that I've been obsessed with lately is exactly what to say by Phil M. Jones. Mm -hmm. Right. And so a lot of those like language patterns and things you say, right. Mine's, mine's right up here as well. A lot of those language patterns and things you say, like when Ryan uses those on me, I'm just like, no, I would not be open-minded to going to get sushi instead of Vietnamese yeah. food. Like, yeah. So anyways, areas of opportunity, identifying strengths and weaknesses in each other. Yep. <laughs> what I mean, else? That, that really, I mean, when it comes down to it, there's, it's, it's like you have to be able to separate your, your personal feelings, your personal relationship that you have outside, you know, we're parents and then we are, you know, best friends and then we are man and wife and now we're business partners. Yeah. And so when you're at work, you have to act like business partners. And if you start bringing in, you know, little connotations of marriage into a business relationship, you know, the little, you know, contempt comments or the little, you know, like, like, you know, each other's buttons so well, you know, yeah. what I mean? like you're poking at each other at work. That's shitty. Like, that's not that's not going to end up well. So you have to be able to respect each other enough at work, just like you would another professional, yeah. which, you know, is hard some days because then you're like, you're kind of like we're going to discuss this later, but we're going to let this go right at this moment. Right. Yeah. Like we'll discuss it later. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, he's the thing is he's a good businessman. Like you kind of mentioned, we, we have a similar work ethic. We have similar goals. So I think that, you know, we have an aligned vision of what we want life and our future to look like. Yeah. Um, so the day to day just really comes down to having a ton of patience and having a ton of professionalism um, as well as, uh, you know, being a little PC sometimes. Around the uh, unfortunate. Um, no, I think, I think that's huge. I think that it is, it is sometimes hard, um, especially yeah, when you know each other's buttons to push. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, if you are in an argument at home and then you come to work, it's like, all right, like, you know, you go over there, I go over here. I think one of the other things, at least for me, um, for us is like, it's not like we're like, out showing homes together or we're right. like, you know, sometimes we do go on appointments together. Sometimes we do, we do drive mm -hmm. to stuff together or whatever, but it's like, we each have our own clients. We are yeah. doing different stuff for the team, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah. And ours, ours is similar as well, where, you know, it was our first year we both did both. So we both had a buyer and a seller pipeline. Yeah. Um, we both had, you know, all these things. And we realized pretty quickly that, um, you know, I'm more suited to the listing side okay. I'm, and he's more suited to the buyer side. And so, which was kind of, it's kind of counterintuitive because most people think that like women make better buyer's agents and men make better listing agents. Depends but on the personalities though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we, we then in the beginning of 2018 decided to split that up. Okay. And that's been, that's been huge because I'm able to stay in the mentality of representing sellers um, of creating the standard operating procedures and the SOPs for everything listing for the entire team yeah. and conversely for him to be able to do that on the buyer's side. Right. So. Well, and so y'all are both still in production today. Is that correct? Yep. Both of us are. Mm -hmm. And then you have team members as well. We do. Yeah. So, I mean, as a team, we sell anywhere between, between 200 and 250 houses a year. Um, Mike and I obviously are quite a bit of those. So I've, you know, he, his typical sales is between 60 and 80 a year. Mine's between 40 and 50. Um, so, you know. He's doing 60 to 80 buyers a year? Yeah. yeah. That's so wild. 20, 2021, he did 83 and 81, respectively. So last year, our units were all down, of course, a little bit. A little but. bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. Um, so I want to talk about how he does that because I know yeah. that you guys have a, a system that it's a little bit different from the traditional team. So, like, you've got your team mm -hmm. team. And then you have kind of how y'all sell so many homes, right? 
Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. How, how is he leveraging his time to sell 80 units in a year? Yeah, well, it is exactly that Katie. It's leverage. Um, yeah. you know, in 2017, when we got back into it, we had no leverage. We had no, nothing, right. We didn't, we had to build it. And so we kind of immediately took to, um, our different areas of expertise or areas of responsibility. So I really managed the children because we have three kids, uh, 13, 11, and seven, um, now, and he, he took to the marketing side and to the, you know, PPC. And we have a really good, deep relationship with Nick from Driven Leads, who's, who ran our PPC for the restaurant company for a couple of years before we got into real estate. So it was an easy, just like keyword switch. And then boom, we're off. Right? Um, Instead of food, it is now yeah. houses. Yeah. It used to be happy hour. Now it's houses for sale. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we, we kind of took off in those trajectories. And then as we started to be able to, you know, basically put away money and started to see really consistent business come in and we had consistent closings, we were able to start building leverage in. So for me, the first piece of leverage I built in was a nanny, of course, because I needed to be able to have coverage for school drop-offs and pickups. Yeah. Um, and then I was able to focus on business more during those hours. So I had more focused time. Then the next hire we did was like a TC or an admin for the both of us, um, which was a lot for that person doing you know, at the time we did the our first year, we had 79 meals together. Um, but it was a lot, right, for yeah. that person to come into. And then we started, we added a couple of agents, which kind of helped just with the lead flow and making sure yeah. the leads were falling through the cracks. Then we adopted about three and a half, almost four years ago, we adopted what's called a partner model. And so he has now two full-time salary partners. I have one full-time salary partner. And really they, we kind of, we talk about it and we 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 exercise it like a doctor-nurse relationship. So yeah. Mike and I are the converters. We are responsible to build our pipelines. We are responsible to bring in the business. We are the ones who go on the appointments, close the client. Um, we set expectations. We negotiate the deal. We write the offers. We do the, the stuff that really matters. But at the end of the day, really, there's so much stuff in between the showing of the homes, the filling out of all the paperwork on the listings, the coordinating of the vendors and the contractors and the people for, you know, our sellers getting their houses ready. There's so many time consuming things to do in this industry that really are not super high dollar producing activities. And so we just really kind of broke it down and said, okay, what are, what are the things that I can do that are going to utilize my skill set yeah. the most, right? And that really is, comes down to the conversion activities and the marketing activities. And so that's where we put our focus. We put our focus into trainings, into leadership development, um, into marketing, into video production, and then of course, conversion. So calling past clients and calling current clients and following up on our own pipelines. And then our partners are there to basically nurture our pipeline. So once they become a client with us and they sign with us and wanna work with us, we then say, hey, this is my partner. She's going to be connecting with you twice a week, be sending you homes. If you want to see a home, one of us is available seven days a week and yeah. converse on the seller side too. So we have built in this leverage where we have these full-time people who are completely committed to a white glove experience with our clients. And that allows us to do the high producing dollar activities. That's amazing. So with that, I know one of the things that's very important to y'all is ensuring that work-life balance. And I feel like work-life balance in real estate is this like elusive unicorn that everyone talks about. And, you know, you get it by time blocking, just time block, Rachel, and yeah. you'll have work-life balance, right? And, it's and right there in the calendar. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> there is some truth to that, right? Like, yeah. you know, in, in blocking out what is important and blocking out the things that like are non-negotiables for you. Um, but what are like, you guys, I don't want to say you take off a ton of time, but like you guys are very committed to, to your family and mm -hmm. the time that you're taking off. So like what? Is that just from the set like the salaried partners? At what point were you has that been since 2016 that like you guys have always done that? Or what's yeah. what's kind of been the, the background on that? Super good question because I think that a lot of people get into this industry for the freedom that this job allows, right? And the yeah. schedule freedom. I love my flexible work schedule. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, flexible work schedule. And so did I. I mean, we both did, right? That's that was part of it. But let's be super crystal clear that you have to earn that flexibility. You have to put in the time, you have to put in the inconvenient hours, you and you have to continue to put in the inconvenient, you know, work to yeah. get the convenient lifestyle. And I think that, you know, people coming in expecting that in the first year or two or even three are under a delusion and do not have good mentorship because 
truly to build that kind of leverage and have the type of life where, you know, our structure is we call it the 90 day rule. Okay. So every 90 days, every quarter, we take off between five days and two weeks and we alternate a trip for us and then we a trip with the kids. So a family trip. So we're getting in four vacations a year, um, you know, two with the kids and two just us. And and that doesn't mean we're not working at that at those times. But because we built the leverage in with the partners and with our TC and with our administrative team, we can say, hey, these are the windows that I'm going to be available when I'm gone. We will be checking my email, my text at these times. If it's an SOS, if it's something you cannot handle and absolutely have to have me, like, you know, call three times and and we'll talk through. Yeah. But, you know, really it's about setting expectations. It's about empowering your people. You really have to be okay empowering the people around you and trusting them with the tasks that they have to do. One of my things on that is like, you know, if you go to like Mexico, it's like a very similar time zone. So it's very easy to like sit down and then get caught up and realize it's now noon and you're still sitting in your hotel room responding to emails. But if you go to like Europe or Asia or somewhere on the other side of the world, uh, the time difference is so significant that like you're checking your email when everyone's still asleep and you know, it's also a better vacation in my opinion. So that's my hack to the time balance. You absolutely nailed it. So like, that's exactly, Mike and I have been to Switzerland twice. We're in (laughs) Italy this last year. We're going to Greece next, no, at the end of March. And we're going again back to France and Switzerland this summer for that reason, because nobody in our world is up until three or three, three 30 PM, you know, Europe time. Yeah. We can actually get almost a full day of activities without being bothered yet. Right. And, and we're okay with that lifestyle. Like we're okay taking a break for an hour and coming in and dealing with some things or writing a contract if we need to, whatever, if we need to. But yeah, that's, that's absolutely like, I think we're on the same page. It's way more fun over there too. Yeah. We, um, we went to Asia in 2019 and that was our first big trip, right? Like I got into real estate in 2017, you know, so our first big trip was 2019. And, um, when we did that, it was so wonderful. Like there was one night I remember I was up negotiating a contract with like, and it was like my, one of my best friend's houses, you know? So I was like negotiating mm-hmm. a contract. But other than that, it was so great. It was like, never, yeah. I would wake up in the morning, put out any fires before yeah. dinner, put out any fires. And it was just like, yeah. it was great. Oh, I, um, I for sure had to like literally set an alarm for 1 a.m. Uh, <laughs> Switzerland time one time because I had to hop on a call with the seller who was having a minor meltdown and yeah. you know, I did it and I love to tell about it. And the next morning I got to go and have a good day. So yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the Mexico trip, you know, just like you're, you, you realize it's, it's halfway through the day and you're still sitting in your hotel, hotel room yeah. with bullshit emails. So well, it really is setting those expectations, right? Cause yeah. if, if you tell somebody that this is how it's going to be, this is what I'm going to be available for, stick to that. Like they're going to yeah. trust you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, that's exciting. Have you been to Greece before? Mm-mm. We just went, um, this summer. So we'll have to connect mm-hmm. after this and oh my gosh, give, you, yes. give you some stuff depending yes, on where please. you're going. So, where did you, yeah. yeah, where all did you go? Uh, we went to, obviously flew into Athens and then we went to um, Crete, mm-hmm. uh, two, two different places in Crete and then Mykonos and Santorini. Awesome. So, so. we're doing Athens and Santorini. So okay, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, I'll give you some some scoop. Yes, please. Give you some yes, scoop. Please. And if you're listening to this and you need some scoop, shoot me a DM. Happy to <laughs> share share our, our experiences. He's um, definitely a travel agent now. She will give <laughs> travel tips. Yeah, a travel agent's like, actually, just send them to me. Stop, <laughs> yeah. stop doing that. Um, no, that's that's awesome. I think that it's so cool that you guys have committed to that and then are like actually sticking to it. Because I think that's the biggest thing is like people tell you you can have work-life balance by time blocking and then you time block and then your day goes to shit and then mm-hmm. you're just like very upset by it. Yeah. Um, and so it's cool that you guys have made that commitment and then stuck to it, especially to like be present for each other and then also your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I really like that. Well, and let's be totally honest. Like there have been so many times that we could have easily talked ourselves out of going <laughs> yeah. because the market or because you know, this is going on in the business, but Hey guys, like number one, we built this so we can rebuild it. Yeah. Right. It all burns down in the 10 days that we're gone. We can rebuild it. It's unlikely <laughs> to happen. First of all. <laughs> But, worst but case, also, yeah, what's like, the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's also like life is passing you by. Yeah. Like it's going to, it's going to go on. And if like time is absolutely our most valuable commodity. Yeah. And especially when you have kids and especially when you're young in your marriage, right? Like, I mean, not young, but we've been married for almost 15 years, but it's like, 
man, this is like, we're going to, we're going to blink and be 60. And we could have said, oops, we don't have time for that. Oops. We don't have time to go there. Let's cancel all these trips and wake up 60 wishing we had done them. Like I tell everybody, like every single trip we've ever been on, every single time off we've ever taken, I have never one time come back and been like, shoot, I really regret that. I really regret <laughs> uh, going Italy to Italy was three weeks. That was just <laughs> awful, right? Like it was too Italian, too many cars. Yeah, way, way too Italian. Everybody, everybody called my husband Rambo the whole time. Like I don't know. <laughs> Squeeze his biceps uh, from the street, you know. Oh boy. <laughs> why have why have them if people aren't going to squeeze them? You know, uh, that's I've just been doing curls. I told you I've been doing upper body mm -hmm. upper body work. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really cool. And I also like um, you know, and you we're in the first part of the year, right? And you're talking about like this is what we're doing this summer. This is what we're doing in the fall. So it's like having them already planned out. I think it's helpful. And so I think word of advice out there for people that may be listening, like holy shit, like how 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 do they afford four trips? I can't do that. I'm just starting out, whatever. Book at least something, like even if it's a weekend away, um, if it's a staycation, if it's just something for you to, to re refresh and reset and things like that. Um, because once you have it booked, like there's nothing more motivating than, you know, needing to make that money, right? So booking the yes. cruise, booking the trip, booking the hotel, whatever it may be. Um, and it always, it always works out. Like it always seems to work out. So it does. Well, and honestly, like the, we didn't start going to Europe. Like we didn't start yeah. from these long Three weeks. In. Yeah. Like we definitely started, you know, going to Vegas for five days and just chilling out and relaxing by the pool. Right. Or going to an all inclusive in Mexico for five days, like things that were relatively affordable or even in the very beginning, you know, utilizing some sites that you can book it and then pay every month toward yeah. that trip. Right. And like you said, Man, when you've got something booked, you will never work as hard as the three weeks prior to leaving. Let me yeah. tell you, like that is so motivating. So there's nothing like having a vacation booked to get your ass moving. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, all right. We haven't really hit, I mean, all of this has been advice, but like obviously the title of the podcast is Real Advice. Yes. So if you were talking to a brand new agent that just got licensed today, and PPC wasn't an option for them, right? Take that off the table. What would be your biggest piece of advice for them to get going in real estate? Yeah. So my biggest, I have, I have two, two biggest pieces of advice. Cause I think there are two things that most people, I think everybody knows to connect with others. Right. Um, so number one would be to, to continue to connect. So stay really active either in your church, stay really active in your gym, stay active in an area of interest to you that's authentic and that's genuine. Um, yeah. Don't go start, you know, don't join a networking group for realtors. <laughs> like, please don't do that. There's going to be 27 other realtors in that group. Yeah. But get Stay very active and consistent with the people that you see in building relationships in those environments. Um, and then number two, utilize any and all training opportunities and market training opportunities because you are going to learn the fastest and from the best from the people who have gotten their teeth kicked in before you. So seek out mentorship, seek out the people humbly who have done this and know things that you don't yet and be open to all that feedback. One of the things that I'm, I was really proud that we did our first year was I would call every single agent after our closing and just ask like if there was anything that we could have done that, to make it smoother or if yeah. there was anything and anything that we did that was odd. And I learned so many things from other agents. <laughs> You know, they're always so willing to be like, oh, well, you did this and I would have done this instead. And like, you didn't do yeah, that. right. Yeah. And, and so like, be humble. Like the first, the first year or two, like truly make connections in a consistent, authentic environment and educate, like get training, get mentorship, look at market stats, you know, in your Northwest, in your MLS or whatever, just really continually educate yourself. Yeah. No, the being humble thing, I think is huge. The first transaction I ever had, I was like trying to fill out you know, the contract and instead of using an amendment, oh, well, I was, we were negotiating instead of filling out an amendment. Like I tried to resend her a new contract. She's like, no, no, no. And she like actually walked me through it. Oh, wow, and yeah. I was like, oh, you know, her name was Rachel. I was like, oh, Rachel, thank you so much. This is my first deal. She's like, no, I remember my first deal, like, mm -hmm. you know, completely here for it. Um, yeah, so that. it was, awesome. it was very nice of her. Cause I was like, you know, I, I don't know that I would have been that gracious today. Yeah, right. With, with yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to hit you with one last question. Bring it on. If it were your last meal on earth, what would you be eating? That is a great question. If it was my last meal on earth, I would 
go back to Italy and I would have a white truffle olive oil and garlic sauce pasta with grilled chicken. White truffle is ridiculous. It's like $700 an ounce and it's only available three months a year. And I didn't know that when we went there. Perfect timing. And it was perfect. And it was like, all you need is like three little tiny shavings in yeah, your entire yeah, dish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's also no. so expensive. It's like, well, <laughs> all I can afford is one shaving <laughs> today. But <laughs> it's, it's like, it looks like fettuccine Alfredo and it costs like 30 bucks. You're like, damn, yeah. that's, that's the white truffle. That's why. Yeah. So, yeah, that's probably what I'd have. It was just it. It was phenomenal. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for taking the time today to chat. Um, really love connecting with you and, you know, just making fun of Mike and, and learning more about real estate, obviously. Um, if someone doesn't already follow you on social, where's the best place for them to connect with you? Yeah. So both Instagram and Facebook, I'm pretty dang active on. Uh, it's just my full name, Rachel with an A N O V A K, Rachel Novak. So that's me. Awesome. Good deal. Well, wish you nothing but the best. And again, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks. Thanks so much, Katie. Enjoy your day.